Hello, everyone, and welcome to our session on using ShareWell to help automate the Treasury Department at Duke Realty. I am Mike Fuson from Excalibur Data Systems, one of the senior solution architects and consultants that had the pleasure of collaborating with Duke Realty on this great endeavor. I'd like to introduce my co-speaker, Ronnie Banks. Ronnie? Hello, Ronnie Banks here, Duke Realty Corporation. I am one of the ShareWell administrators here at Duke. Um, just to let you know a little bit about Duke Realty, uh, Duke Realty is a leader in the commercial real estate and we were founded in 1972. We have set the standard for providing high quality uh, productivity enhancing industrial buildings uh, throughout the nation. And Duke basically we develop, uh, we do property management and leasing. Great. So Ronnie, let's talk about Duke Realty's journey on digital transformation of your treasury department and treasury department requests. What, was, what were some of the challenges that were, were faced by your treasury department? So our treasury department uh, challenges were that they were, it was a fully manual process. Uh, the requests were email or paper-based. The tracking of requests was paper-based. Uh, it was a very complex paper-based approval process and auditing actions were very difficult. So there really wasn't anything that was electronic or automated or anything like that, all paper-based, all manual, all walking back and forth to get um, approvals. And they came to, to, to you guys as the IT department and said, hey, we wanna make this a digital process. And you guys said, hey, we have the tool for you, right? That is correct. Yes. And so what, uh, what, 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 did, what was the, the initial solution in a general sense that was talked about? Uh, so when they actually came to us to see if there was anything that we might be able to assist with, you know, the first thought for us was ShareWell. Let's see if we can leverage ShareWell to create, track, and manage treasury requests, utilize uh, digital approvals, um, automate workflows and actually have email notifications. Get away from that manual process and just leverage ShareWell. Excellent. Sounds pretty exciting. But you had kind of a path to success. So what did you do and how did you do it in taking this treasury group from a paper-based one email, shared email box type experience into a more fulfilling and capable request process? So um, we sat down with the treasury team and did an initial review, gathering a lot of just your basic high level requirements that they needed, um, reviewed the current incident and service request object with the customer with treasury department. Um, after we did that, we then came back and did a detailed review to gather some more detailed requirements that they needed and to actually build a new treasury request business object within ShareWell, so that way it's completely separate from incidents and any other object. We then got into agile configuration to configure objects and perform regular customer reviews of the work in progress. Um, and you know, from there we put it in test, ended up putting it in production. And at that point, Treasury then were able to come to us and say, okay, let's do some continual service improvements, uh, make some changes as needed to continue improving and evolving their processes. Sounds like a great path to have a successful tool put in for a new team. So we wanted to put a quote in here. So imagination is more important than knowledge for knowledge is limited to all we now know and understand while imagination embraces the entire world and all there ever will be to know and understand. This is from Albert Einstein. Um, we, we kind of chose this quote um, because that was really a core tenet. Um, and I will tell you as uh, someone who, you know, had the opportunity to collaborate with the ShareWell team at Duke Realty in putting this together, um, it was trying to be, uh, imagine how we could leverage this very powerful platform that you already owned um, to help this team in delivering what they want. Um, and really understanding what their needs were and not limiting it to what we know, uh, how we'd want to do it in the tool. We wanted to understand how they wanted to do it and help guide them along that journey. Um, mm -hmm. So 
this is what it ended up looking like. Uh, we're going to do, a, Dr. Ryan's going to do a, a little demo later, but for many of you that uh, are, uh, you know, Sharewell admins that are out there or Sharewell users, um, this is, you know, very similar uh, in layout and design to uh, the out-of-the-box incident object with just some minor changes. And that was kind of part of your process, Ronnie, was showing the team what you were already using, what was already there. And they were like, this looks great, you know, um, but can we simplify a couple of things? There's things we don't need that IT might use. Uh, and I know we'll see in the demo, we leverage specific screens very heavily to really help automate many of their processes. Um, and each of the processes, depending upon what they're doing and potentially even with which bank they're interacting, those processes can be slightly different to significantly different. So we'll get to see that here in a few minutes. But how did we get there? So what were some of the key considerations, Ronnie, that you and the Sharewell team at Duke Realty um, used to uh, ensure success? So we definitely said that um, using the Sharewell system um, and for Treasury using them, we definitely needed to have consistency and ease of use, um, common process consolidation, approval flexibility. So if one approver is not available, they can easily switch to another approver and you know get that approval, meeting some unique needs that they had and understanding their you know full audit needs and everything that they needed to keep track of. And that was such a foundational element that I remember from participating in this journey was the audit needs. What did we need to make sure we were capturing? What did we need to make sure was available so that they could effectively audit it, which was somewhat painful in their paper process? And how could we make that significantly less painful? And how much of it could we automate? So they didn't have to think about it. It captured certain data points. And we'll get to see some of that when you, when you do your, your short demo. But what were some of the key items that came out of your, your process and talking with them that you knew needed to be there? Um, you, like you mentioned earlier, specific forms. So we definitely needed to make sure that we had robust use of specific forms, depending on what bank or, or what transaction they needed to make. They actually were able to use different um, specific forms. Leveraging approval capabilities while affording flexibility. Um, mentioned earlier, if one approver is not available, to be able to easily switch to another one. Leveraging automated processes whenever possible and leveraging one steps extensively to help with workflows, just kind of putting everything together in the background, um, just kind of, you know, again, making it to where it's consistency and easy to use for them. So some of the, one of the elements that we spent a lot of time working on is the confirmation request process. And that can continue to evolve as we were building that out. So, you know, being that this group deals with significant fund moves, you know, significant dollars that are being moved from one account to another, um, mm -hmm. there are, there's a confirmation process they go through. And so one of the things they had asked for after we've got the confirmation process put in place was, well, could we track those and know that we had already previously confirmed a certain type of transaction or certain accounts that things are moving to. So um, that had to be built out and considered. And this is part of that uh, testing and, 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 and agile process, but also part of what's happened as part of your CSI is looking at some of those things. The approval process. I know as we went through this, one of the things that was built was really with that flexibility in mind that you talked about, making sure these processes were built so they were flexible and could be adjusted as we go forward, automating the treasury request. So you're, you're gonna give an example, I know in the demo of one of the treasury requests that is fully automated end to end. Um, it comes in, that approval is given. If the approval is received, then the system takes the action for them and they don't have to do anything else. It automatically resolves itself. Email notifications, can you talk a little bit about that? You know, beyond the uh, hey, we've created one for you. Hey, we've resolved it. You guys have many different types of notifications that go on. What are some of those types of notifications that are happening? Uh, so with this treasury um, process that we created, we do have about 
18 different email notifications. Um, just a few off the top. One is treasury confirmations. Uh, you have the notify the owner of the um, incident or the uh, treasury request owner of the team um, and pending approvals that are out there, uh, bank wire confirmations. So there's a variety of different email notifications that we're using for you know, different, um, different things that they're requesting. So leveraging the power of the platform to do those unique email notifications as needed. Mm -hmm. yes. So demo time, Ronnie. I'm gonna turn right. it over to you and okay. uh, have you share with us uh, a, a couple of, uh, of the key and, and, and important elements of things that you did. Let's get that up here. And can you see my screen? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, so here we actually have the Treasury dashboard. This is what they are reviewing um, just throughout the day. They bring this up. They're able to just right here in the top left hand corner. Um, unassigned bank wires would actually allow them to see any of those. Bank wires awaiting approval. If we kind of come down here, we have open bank wires themselves. We have closed bank wires and back up to the top. Treasury wanted to be able to do some searching. So we have search bank wires. They can search by bank um, account names. Uh, I'm sorry, the search to bank account names, uh, search to bank account numbers, search from bank account and from bank account name and numbers. Um, and then search bank wire amount. Um, they also needed to have the capability of running reports. So here they can run bank wire reports, um, of different bank wires that they actually have. And then over on the left here, we have my work. So for me, hello, Ronnie Banks. Um, this is gonna let me know what treasury requests I actually have that I'm the, that's my work, I'm the owner of that. And then just total bank wires right here itself. Excellent. Can we take a look at what, what a treasury request looks like? Sure. Um, so here, because of the fact that I'm a sharewell administrator, I'm able to see all of this, but, you know, Treasury themselves would only see this new Treasury incident right here. So let's click this to open up a new Treasury request. Um, the requester is going to be, you know, who actually is requesting the bank wire or Treasury request. Uh, some description here. Category and subcategory is where we really get into uh, what specific form is going to come up. So I'm going to select my category, select my subcategory, and that's going to display the specific form for that. Um, here we have the created date, it lets me know exactly the date that I'm creating this particular request. The due date that the bank wires do, bank entry date, the amount, uh, we have the from account name and number, to account number and name, routing number. Um, here we have some logic that's definitely really built in as well. Approver one, I select approver one. And so this particular request needs two approvers. So I'm gonna select the second approver and the first approver will not appear in the second approvers list and vice versa, the second approver does not appear in the first approvers list because they're already being used. I would then hit submit for approver, approval and the treasury team has the ability to um, also send a reminder to the approvers in the event that they have not you know, gotten a, an approval within a timely manner. Um, at the same time, if they see that one of the approvers is not available, then they can easily come here and switch it and go ahead and proceed forward. Um, additionally, once the approver actually does actually approve that request, um, and this is one of the email notifications that they're gonna receive, they can approve it uh, via that email, and here it would actually show approved. So the treasury team would actually see who's approved and who hasn't. Very cool, and I know when we worked on that confirmation process, we've got a lot that goes on behind the scenes in some of these uh, buttons for the users to be able to use. Uh, mm -hmm. And, but, but, you know, I'll, I, I kind of refer to that as kind of trademark Mike Fuson thing, you know, share well voodoo, 
you know, you as administrators and, and you as the constructors of this built a lot of things to make it very simple for them to take certain actions. It was very, yeah. very cool. Yes. Um, so here also I can go in and we'll just, we'll just go through another one. Uh, let's say update approvers. This is gonna bring up a different specifics form. Uh, we want to add a new approver. So I click on this, it's going to give me a list of active, active directory users. I select a user, press okay. And now I'm pressing submit for approval. approval. Um, that then is going to go to approver one and approver one will then receive that and validate if this is a valid request. And once they press approve, then it's going to come back into ShareWell and immediately go through the process of adding them to a uh, approver list and closing the ticket out. Additionally, down here is where you can actually see, you know, for auditing purposes, um, you know, tasks, journals, approvals, and the an approval history. Very cool. So this is an example of one of the ones that kind of automates itself. Yes. Um, and you've, and you've created multiple specific screens and part of your tenant and your design for that was to keep that commonality of the items that are there and make the experience consistent, but then have other drivers of does a request require no approvers, a single approver, two approvers, or a named approver as in this case. And that's all yes. driven off of your subcategory table um, to make yes. it very, very easy to make adjustments these follow certain sets of rules um, mm -hmm. and they're consistent across the board. Very, very cool stuff, Ronnie. Um, I'm sure yeah. folks are going to want to see more of some of the things that uh, you guys have done and look forward to maybe sharing that next year. So what did we need to do or what, what, do, what do you need to do in order to succeed the way that Duke Realty has succeeded um, in delivering this service request process to their users. Um, so you've got a few elements that are going to be part of this. First of all is understanding what the need is. So that's having the conversation as the team at Duke Realty did with their uh, customer and gathering the basic requirements. And then they reviewed with them something that they already have that was similar to the process being asked for. Not identical, but similar. And that's where you started with your incident and service request object. And they said, hey, this looks great, but can we make these couple of changes? And that gave you some baseline requirements. Then you started to move into those more detailed requirements, which revolved very clearly around a lot of the specific screen functionality um, and the other process type items that they needed within the platform. And then you, what we did was we built out a shell of the overall system and built out one very simple specific and they did a review with the customer. So we could make sure hey, we're on the right track. What do you guys think? And there were little adjustments they had us make, but it was pretty close to what they were envisioning. Then we went into an agile configuration mode and we configured the objects uh, and then performed regular check-ins with the customer. So as we completed certain large elements of those specifics forms, we would do a review. And we found in some cases we were right on point and in some cases, what we understood and what they thought they were telling us were a little bit different. And we were able to get that realigned and make our adjustments before we got too far down the path. Mm -hmm. And then your CSI mode is what you're in now. You've taken this into production and they've asked for multiple little adjustments to the system. There was an adjustment as to being able to take an approver that uh, has been set and it's been submitted through. We don't wanna be able to change approvers, but to be able to take that approver and say, hey, they didn't take any action. Let's make another, let's pick a different approver. And it's all then audited. Hey, it was, a, Ronnie was originally asked and now we're gonna send it over to Lewis to have Lewis be the approver. And so Ronnie didn't take any action. What, what did we do and why did we do it? Um, those sort of, sort of auditable things. And then little items. Um, I know one of the things that we worked on was the two approver ones were originally in uh, parallel with each other. So we adjusted it to be in sequence per what the customer was looking for. So in this short time, it was great to be able to share with you the exciting things that Duke Realty 
has done with their ShareWell platform and bringing it to a group outside of IT. I, Mike Fuson, thank you for watching. Ronnie? Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we'd ask you to fill out the survey uh, at the conclusion of this session to tell us uh, what you, if you'd like to see more. We'll look forward to seeing you online. Uh, come find us and we'll be happy to talk more with you about the exciting things that Duke Realty is doing with their ShareWell platform. Thanks everyone. Thank you, bye.